just to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask is to be like Him. Let us pray. Dear God, we truly thank you so much for this opportunity, Lord, that we can say it is good to be here today. We appreciate your kindness. We appreciate your mercy. God, we ask you that you be among us today and take all our needs and desire, oh God, and help us to look to you who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We are not perfect this morning, God, but we beg your grace and mercy so that our praise may be accepted to you and our worship, our thoughts and mind. Any sick among us, God, we pray for healing. Any issues, we pray that we solve through the move of the Holy Spirit. Keep our minds stay in your Lord, and anything that shall be said and done will be to your glory and to your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.
one day when we get there in heaven, when we can just fall at the feet of Jesus. Just fall at the feet. And we're not even going to be weeping with sadness, but we're going to have so much joy and peace when we get to that place. And that is just such a beautiful thing to think of. So, Lord God, we just ask that you have your way. In Jesus' name, amen.
is going on. God reigns on the throne. Amen. Amen. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift our hearts in praise. You 
there is no one else like Jesus, miracle worker, life transformer. He can do all things. Jesus, have your way right now.
forget about ourselves. Let's put ourselves, let's put our needs to the side and let's say, hallelujah, you are holy, you are worthy, Jesus. Worthy of all the praise and all the honor. And that's why we do this, Jesus. That's why we do this, Lord. We are asking that you guide our steps, guide our hearts, guide our minds, Lord Jesus, and have your way in this service, Lord God. We are praying for a blessing, Lord God. We are praying for a blessing. God, I pray that you bless the speaker as they come, as they have prepared, as they have studied, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, have your way. Amen and amen. And stay in the worship this morning. Stay focused on the Lord, not on any distractions. But let's just take this time out of our long weeks to really dedicate to the Lord and put God first. In Jesus' name. listening rejoice to say father some praise is coming to your majesty some praise is coming up to you oh my goodness this just break through break through the clouds of heaven break through the atmosphere I just feel as we were singing the, the hallelujah praise was just breaking through the atmosphere praise be the name of God and the presence of the Lord is in this place I, I feel that God appreciate time that the, that the team, the praise and worship team just take and, and put their thoughts together and to just come here every Sunday, rain or shine, winter or cold, to, to just prepare to worship God, whether the place is full or not full, there's a focus in giving God the praise and that's the way I, I, I like to see it when we don't worry about who is here from who is not here, but we just come and prepare ourselves to worship God. And that's all God requires of us, that whether we are full or half full or quarter full or whatever the, the ratio may be, we praise in God. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. Find your praise. Find your worship. Praise God. I hope you can find your own worship in these critical times. We're living in critical times, church. We're living in critical moments. Anything can happen. We could go into World War III at any given moment. You know, it's like the time is just ticking for that. Just one mistake. Just that one mistake that needed and then we plunge into World War III and now it is not soldiers fighting and to hand combat anymore. It's nuclear weapons. People stay thousands of miles away and, and hitting each other and damaging the environment. These are the type of wars that is gonna be taking place. So we are living in critical time. I invite people who are Christians and come in to come to church again. It's important we start going to the house of God again and at least pray. And you don't tell me what God won't do. He can roll back the hands of time until his time. But we don't want men start to force the hands of God. Like the people at the Tower of Babel start to build tower and having God to respond in such a drastic way and change the one language to several language, change the one looking featured people to many featured people. So we want people to start to pray again. Come into the house of God and start pray again. Um, let us not hide under the umbrella of COVID anymore. We can't do it. That is over. Uh, the, the, the shopping centers are filled with people shopping and going about their business. All of us are back to work 
again even during the COVID. So let us not come under that umbrella anymore. Let us find ourselves in the house of God again. Start calling upon God again like Seth and Enos, his son. When, when Enos was born, men begin to call upon God again. As the year close out, let's let the year close out with us calling upon God again. Finding our prior time in the house of the Lord. Amen. God bless you today and keep your mind still. In. Amen. Well, last week we had a very interesting message. We had a very interesting message last week. And I usually have it find a hard time continuing my messages because I love to prepare new stuff. I am challenged to just go into the Bible every week and see what the Lord, where the Lord leads me and listen to those niche, those spiritual vibration of new messages coming into me. And so, and I like to study and write God's word. And um, so this week I, 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 somebody said to me, please finish that message. You have so many messages to finish. Please finish it. And um, so I said, okay, I will try to finish. I will try to continue it and, and see where the Lord leads. So the, the message was, know your source of spirituality, for it is bigger than you. Know your source of spirituality, for it is bigger than you. So we figured out last week, our, so I won't be going over everything, but last week we figured out that our source of spirituality is originated in God. Like many cultures and eth ethnic groups, ethnic backgrounds, and many will tell you where their spirituality comes from. It comes from their father, tradition, mother, uh, Machelanian lineage, Pachelanian lineage. Our uh, community um, issues may create that spiritual spirituality. I, I, I read about uh, somewhere in D in Denosia, uh, back in the days, of, of their spirituality in a particular village, not all of the country, but in a particular village, how their spirituality came about. There was a young man bringing in a fish into the village. He went to the sea and he caught a fish. Huge fish, you know, feel very proud having his fish hanging over his back, coming into the city to f in the village to feed his family. And a whole lady said, young man, don't eat that fish. Elderly woman, you know, don't eat that fish. If you eat that fish, something bad is going to happen. So the young man totally ignored the whole the lady and go cook the fish and feed his family. And lo and behold, a day or so later, a tsunami came and washed the village away. Washed the village away. Just witnesses left over to tell the tales. So there, a spirituality developed uh, when, when an elderly lady tells you not to do something, you must listen. So there goes a Machelanian society where everybody look to their elderly mother lineage and go get answer to whatever they have planned. Before they would carry out that plan, uh, they would have to go to um, uh, that motherly lineage, whoever is a elderly mother in the lineage, to ask questions before they go ahead. So once the, 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 the mother is that elderly woman is, is, is divorced, our husband, not divorced, but husband died. They, keep, they kept all the, the elderly mother at a, very, at a place where you can always go and seek advice. So there goes a spirituality develops. And there's another story where um, pe people used to cross, cross this river to go over from one part of the village to the other. And then... One day, uh, all of a sudden, somebody walked, and just one stone, there's a stone that connects the, the crossover. And when this uh, young man stepped on the stone, it rolled away, and he drowned. And, and from there on, everybody that tries to step across that very same spot, and, the, and that stone just drowned, drowned. So one day, this man decided to ha have a sacrifice of, 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 of animals to the stone. And from that day, no more person stepped on the stone 
drowned. So there goes a development of spirituality. And I could stand here all day and tell you about many developments of people's spirituality and for the next couple hours uh, that I have studied and researched into, and some of them I write about. And, and you will just amaze how spirituality developed out of simple things. There was one story about uh, people in the villages need water, and they came upon this river, but there was, the river was poisoned. And so they couldn't drink the water. And one person, somebody had to first drink of that water for the poison to get out of the water so everybody else could drink the water and be saved. So that's this one person decide to go drink the water and kept the water in his throat until he started to change color while other people were getting the water. So there was, and, and from that day, that person become the god of that community. It is just amazing the development of spirituality and how people really stand today, even today. They support that individual as God of that particular village. It, it is just amazing. So folks, it's interesting that we know where our spirituality coming from. So when we speak of spirituality, is, is, a, is that devotion and connection with the other, otherness. Someone out of us, someone who is greater, someone who is higher, someone who has power. So some people find spirituality in rocks. Uh, you remember the goddess Diana uh, in the Bible? Even in the Bible, too, it tells you people's spirituality developed. The goddess Diana, Diana is actually an asteroid fell from the sky. And the people begin to worship this rock that fell from the sky as a goddess. And it, it was rather interesting. Actually, this stone is in the British Museum today. Um, Paul wrote about it. <coughs> so it's just amazing. And they actually, actually <laughs> wanted to kill Paul over it <laughs> uh, when he talks about it. There was a little girl who possessed with spirit of divinity in the community. And then you have all these other spiritism. This young woman possessed with spirit, uh, the spirit of divinity. She could tell what fortunes, what you should do tomorrow, what you should not do. And all the businessmen would go to her to get advice whether or not to do business or not to do business. And, and, and this young girl following Paul around in the community once the apostles enter the community. It's all in the book of Acts. And begin to call Paul, 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 Paul. And Paul knew it was another spirit into this young lady. And he just turned and rebuked the spirit of divination out of the young girl. She couldn't tell no more fortune. She couldn't predict anymore. And the businessmen wanted to kill Paul. Because he rebuked the spirit of divination out of this young lady. So there are individuals out there. You can go for reading. And they may just eventually tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. And a lot of people believe in those things. A lot of people practice those things. Astrology is a good example that people just can't live their life with those, they, they, they read their, 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 their horoscope. And all these things are going on today. So folks, it's in, as I said, it is, in, it is important that we know where our source of spirituality is coming from. Amen? It's been for Christians, and I hope that all Christians fall under this heading, our spirituality originated out of God, the God of Abraham. And we, if, we, if we lack knowledge of our God and who he really is, then we can start off with Abraham. Amen? You can start with Abraham. Which God you serve? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And consistently throughout the scripture, we will see the Bible speak of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Monotheism. We serve one God. We believe in one God, not many gods. For Christians, I hope it is for all Christians that we are serving one God. And if we lack knowledge of who he is, just start with Abraham. <laughs> Amen. Just start with Abraham. Because that's where we probably can really find our God from since creation if we lost track of him. Uh, because we know after God created human beings and uh, there was a lack of calling upon God for a while until Seth's son Enos was born. Uh, 
Genesis 4, 26, then men begin to call upon God again. So it seemed that there was a lack of period time between the birth of Enos and Adam's children where men stopped calling upon God. They, they, they weren't calling upon God anymore. Yeah, so there was a time in history when people stopped calling upon God. Genesis 4, 26, correct? You can read it and see if I quote it right. Where it just seemed like people stopped calling upon God. People lost track of God. Until Seth, son Enos was born, then a revival started. And I think we need a revival in this city where people truly start calling upon God again. Like this morning when I hear this song and I look around, I haven't seen some of the folks since COVID, I say, oh my goodness, they should be here when these praises of hallelujah go, goes up to God. Oh my goodness, it was so powerful when we hear the hallelujah, Lord, we praise you, hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. That's the type of calling upon God we need to do again. And then... People start to call upon God, but then it seems like again, during the period of set to now, there's a drastic move away from God again. So periodically, humans, oh, uh, uh, when I say to stop calling upon God, periodically humans stop calling upon God. And then disaster strikes. Because if you begin to study, if you study from set, if you study from set to now, it appears as if there's a gap where humans stop really calling upon God, except for the Noah's family. So think about the population of people during the time of Noah. And it's only one family that God found favor with. So the entire population stopped calling upon God. Today it might be just one church family that is calling upon God. One here, one over there, one in Africa, one in Europe, one in the Caribbean, one in South America. It might be just that on every continent you might have just one church family calling upon God. Because since Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail, there will always be a church that is calling upon Oh, somebody worship here today. That is calling upon God. Amen. So it, it seems like it's going to come down to that. Many are called, but few are chosen. So we see things are shaping up. We had come down to one family. And within that family, it's going to be marginalized down to just a few people. Few of that church family that is actually making themselves available to call upon God again. And this morning worship is a typical example when I, when, when, when I, when I was journeying with the praise and worship team. These are some of the thoughts that come true. So, so God stepped in, and whenever it appears that human sin become the major issue before God, he stepped in and correct the path. So God's spirit, God said, my spirit can't strive in the world anymore with the behavior of people, the attitude of people. The despondency of people towards him. Just the don't care attitude towards God. We care much about our, the things that our commercialized issue than the spiritual issues concerning God. We care more about the issues of our economics going up or down than with the issues of God. Oh, we can properly worship him. Oh, we can plan to serve him. Oh, we can plan to pray. These days we have to plan to pray. It doesn't come out easily anymore. Because life becomes such a challenge. That my goodness, we are working so hard to provide food and shelter. 
that sometimes the work overpower our relationship with God. And that's where you see sinfulness creep, creeps in. In a way, in such a way that it dominates everybody's life. And then God stepped in and made some drastic changes. So in nowadays, that is what was happening. People were given into marriage and doing this and doing that. And nobody cares about worship. Nobody cares about worship. Making the sacrifice to worship. I'm talking about worship. Just simple coming out and lift your voices and your prayer and your scriptures and your music and your heart and your song before the living God. Our spiritual leader. God is our spiritual leader. Manifesting Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. Praise God. He's our spiritual leader. So God said I'm going to destroy humans. Not the world, but humans. Drastic change. And keep now to continue the trend. So between Set and Noah, humans, the human's population dominated by sin. And God wiped it out and saved one family. So there was a time of worship again. There was a time when people during Noah's time, the people started to live God's way again. They hated them. Eight of them were in church. Do you remember talking about today, family is considered God's family considered as a church. It's not one family God is looking on today. It's a church family. So eight people were in, the, in Noah's church. Pastor Noah. Eight people. And those were the eight people God saved. During the destruction of earth. So people were living God's way again. For a while. You saw that. And then the word began to develop again. Populated again. Everybody coming together again. One language. Shem kids start to live together with Ham kids, Japheth kids. They all coming together again. And then something happened again. They now want to build a tower to reach heaven, a space tower. Build it from her up there to be one with God. They want to share that space with God. And then the tower become their God under one language. God destroyed it and create all these look kind of people we see today. <laughs> you look, look at the World Cup and see all the different types of people. <laughs> and they all they sing their national anthem, different languages. That came out of the Tower of Babel. Those languages came out of the Tower of Babel. Those featured people, they look different. Everybody looked different. That is my highlight when I actually look at the world. That's all I look for to see the different types of people in the world today that came out of the tower. I'm not too interested in the, in the game. But just to see people. Because the game, uh, looking at the, the, the FIFA game today, it is so political. Everybody is pushing their issues. Not just pure soccer anymore. And these are all people that came out of the Tower of Babel because God wants humans to focus on him. Not on their eye buildings, not on their towers, not on their religious towers, but on him. Amen. Oh, yes, Lord. For we know before, you got, for God knows before we were formed in our mother's womb, according to uh, Psalms 139, 36. Amen. God knew us before. Amen. Praise God. We are God. God used the same form. I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. God said it. So God is giving us a starting point. God is gentle, leading us to him again. So he called Abraham out of the land of many, Ur, the Chaldeans. That's the same place became Babylon. Because the way they treated the Jewish people came and destroyed their city and take them. You know, Babylon is any city that, 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 that oppressed people. So Ur, the Chaldeans, became Babylon. And God took Abram out of it and said, and give him a four-point blessing. And also told him that, all, that through him, the families of the earth would be blessed. 
So our blessing from this God comes through Abraham. That's why it is, it, it, it is it's encouraged that if we lost track of God since creation, start with Abraham. Some people might be great enough to go and find him beyond Abraham and just start worshiping like many people do. There are tribes and people who try to find creator God but not through the lineage of Abraham, not through Abraham. The writings are out there. And when you read their, 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 their literature and, and their doctrine, you can see, oh, they just miss it. They missed out Jesus. <laughs> and they missed out the purpose for what God called Abraham from. But they're locked into it for thousands of years. There are people today that only follow the fate of Abraham. They don't want this Moses or Jesus in it. They just want to follow the fate of Abraham. We see this started out in the Arabic nation. When they just want to follow the fate of Abraham. Moses for the Jews, Jesus for the Christian. So let's follow the fate of Abraham. And you just see here, you know. So folks, we are living into some period. People really talk about religion these days. It's more about spirituality. And the younger generation, they talk about spirituality. And they can find it anywhere, anyhow. True meditation. A lot of the younger generation today, I prefer Eastern religion because it's more a form of meditation. I can find my own quietness. I can find my own spirituality. So their spirituality is coming from within, not really catered to anyone or in submission to anyone. That spirituality, the Buddha is in you. The God is in you. You find God in you. God is not out there. There is no Son of God. There is no Holy Spirit. You find God in you. And that's the type of world we're living in today. The God of Abraham don't exist for them. The God of Jacob don't exist. But if you're a Christian person or a follower of Christ, your God has to be the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. For God himself said it. I am the God of Isaac. This is what God told Moses in Exodus chapter 3. Tell the people. When Moses asked God, who shall I said, tell, send me to take them out of the land out of slavery. Tell them the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So when I worship, folks, I worship. I want to be sure which God I'm worshiping here. Because I don't have any much knowledge beyond Abraham. Woo! I know God created the heaven and earth. I know he created everything. But beyond Abraham, I have not much knowledge. Other than to read the story of creation. But when I begin to understand God. Today, hallelujah, I understand him through Abraham. I understand him through Moses. I understand him through Jacob. I understand him through Isaac. I understand him through Jesus Christ. And there is my point of reference for the God of creation. Hallelujah. For God told Moses, I am, I am that I am. I am self-exist. I am whom I am. Don't try to equate me with any of the gods of Egypt. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mighty God of Abraham. Mighty God of Isaac. Mighty God of Jacob. Mighty God of Moses. Mighty God of Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. Glory be to God. That's where I find my God. That's where I find my solace. That's where I find my peace. And that's where I find my concentration. And my, in my spirituality. Not my, my father's lineage. Metrilanean or Patrilanean or some rocks or some stone or some legendary story. The God I serve is alive today. He's alive and well. Somebody say what I just say. Oh, yes, sir. And something very unique about God and what Jesus have to say about him. For what you got yesterday, I don't, last week I don't need to go over. But we stop at where Jesus was talking to some folks. Of who he is. So go to John chapter 8. And look at verse 58. And see something very unique about Jesus. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him. Thou art not yet fifty years old. 
and thou hast seen Abraham? <laughs> and Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was I, was I am. And, took, and then took their up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went through the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. This is our prophet. This is how he operates. He was before Abraham. What is Jesus trying to say? Jesus is put, putting himself at some remote point in history before the world. Before Abraham. If Jesus is saying I was before Abraham. He's saying I was before the world created. Or before God talked to Abraham. And called him out of his land. That's what he's actually saying. I, got, I, I, I was before Abraham before God called him out of the land of her. And here John got the revelation about all this. In John chapter 1. Let's see if we can find what Jesus is dealing with here. A very interesting discussion concerning this Jesus. Who is saying I was before for Abraham. Jesus was in his 30s. At this time when he was talking. So, so the, 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 the people were right. When they say you're not even 50 years, 50 years old. And you're saying that you was before Abraham. They were right. Because Jesus was in his 30s. At this time. But let's read what Jesus was actually dealing with. John chapter 1. And you can see why John wrote this. Because Jesus said this before John wrote this. Though you see it way over here in chapter 1. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. But he was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That's what John is saying. I am not the light. What I'm talking about, I sent to bear witness of this light that God sent. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him. Can we read that again? He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. So this man was living in the world. John is talking about. Let's go to verse 11. He came unto his own and his own received him not. None of his people, none of his Jesus' his people accept him as Messiah or their king. Read verse 12. But listen to this. But as many that receive him to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to him that believe in his name. Who is this person? That if you believe in him, you, he gave you the power to become the children of God. This is somebody very superhuman. A spiritual person, this. A spirit man. And when I say spirit man, because he, he possessed spiritual power, but yet he's a human. And was living among humans. And he has the power, if we accept his doctrine, this light. If we accept his doctrine and his message, he will give us the power to become God's children. <laughs> So that's, you see, the development of our spirituality is in this light that God sent in the world. It's not, our spirituality not coming out of a rock or some humans that drink poison. <laughs> or some snake. Or some mother lineage. Mother celestial. Or mother terrestrial. Our spiritually came out of this light that God sent in the world and live among us. <laughs> but listen to the key discussion that John is holding based on what Jesus is saying over here in, 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 in chapter 8. Let's go on and read a little more and see how it's the, our spiritually develops. Uh, 
Uh, but as many, verse 12 of John 1, but as many that receive him to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So this superhuman, this spirit man that God sent in the world were not born by the blood of men, but by the will of God. So we all know the Christmas story that is coming, that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary without having a relationship with her, expo with her engaged husband. She had no intimacy with Joseph because that was the tradition. That when you're engaged, you wait until you're married. That was the law. If you, if you, if you disobey that, you're dead. So that, that was the law. You can't fight that. That's the law of the land. You got to wait till the time of marriage. So Mary, though engaged to Joseph, had to wait. But then the angel came to her and said, you're going to have God's son. Praise be the name of God. Now, the reason why Jesus not born of blood, because Joseph had nothing to do with Mary. God, oh, when Mary asked the angel, how oh, am I going to have this child when I'm not yet seen my husband? You're, you're paraphrasing, read true. And the angel said, the power of God. Somebody say the power of God. The power of God shall perform it. That is why Jesus is not born of flesh and of blood. Because it is the spirit of God that overshadow Mary's and, and create the biological development of that child in her. Oh, somebody worship. Praise be the name of God. So that's why Jesus is a spirit man. Because God caused Mary. And don't tell me if God created humans, Adam and Eve, with trillions of, of nervous and, uh, system from, developed from head to toes, and, and give your brain as the computer, so to speak, to direct your body, human cells, millions of human cells and, and neurons that would take millions a year for one of those neurons to develop into life. Think about your five senses. How on earth can you figure that out? You hearing? Talking? Seeing? Smelling? Those are miraculous things that God gave us. Nobody can make hearing. <coughs> you can make a hearing object that can press through your brain so you can hear, but you can't make hearing. Think about what I'm saying. You all in, in, the, in here, you can't make smelling. It takes some super powerful beam to do things like that. That is inconceivable to create those five senses. So let's go on now and get the, the full. Let's finish up with the verse here, verse 14. And verse 14 said, And the word was made flesh and, the word, <laughs> and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the word... In the beginning, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory of the Holy Begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So when Jesus is telling the people that he was before Abraham, he was telling them the truth, but they couldn't understand the spirituality of it. How he was spiritually connected to the Father. From the beginning of creation, he was the word God used. And the word take on the form of human through a spiritual movement by God upon Mary. Don't tell me if God created humans, he can't cause Mary to have a... That's simple for God. The greatest thing is to create humans. Even the doctors are puzzled, puzzled when they look into human's body. And how it coordinated so perfectly. And if God can make Adam and Eve, don't tell me he just can't breathe and marry for her to have a son. Woo. <laughs> Glory be to God. So that's where our spirituality is coming from. It's coming out of God. 
And him only we give our glory. Him only we sing our hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to God. My praise belongs to God. My amen agreement belongs to God. Oh, glory be to God. I worship my spiritual being. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that he is the Lord that reigns. Him only I worship because he is a son from the bosom of the father. True light from true light. True substance from true substance. True nature from true nature. Interacting with the heavenly kingdom and hurt. And bringing humans into connectedness with the creator. Him only I worship. Oh, praise be the name of God. Hallelujah. I don't find my spirituality through water. There's a story of Thomas when he went to this particular country. After he ran away from Jerusalem, you know, persecution uh, drive the, drove the, 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 the apostles out of Jerusalem and they go all over the world with the gospel. And Thomas uh, ended up in this country. You can ask me which country after it if you really want to know. But he ended up in this country. I just don't want to uh, talk about names right now. But there's record. He ended up in this country. And he go into this village. And he saw the people taking up the water. And as the water fell and throwing up into the ear. And as the water fell down, they worshiped the particles of the water falling. That was like, that was their God. That was spiritually for them, that they could allow to take up the water, throw it up in the air, and it's coming down back. They begin to adore it. And Thomas went by and saw this behavior, and he was igniting his spirit. And he rebuked the water when they throw it up on the water frozen in the air. I actually met a gentleman in Philadelphia who's, who told me the story and said he's from that village. And since that day, the entire village became Christians. And the story handed me down to him. And that's how he became a Christian. Philip rebuked the water. They eventually killed Philip. And that village was able to get the, 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 the bones, or the, Thomas, got the bone of Thomas and, and, and have it replica, save it as a part. Very interesting story. And, and there's a sister in the church too here, we're sitting here right now, who actually ran into a lady from that same village and tell the same story to her. Am I right? Yes. Tell the same story. So we know and we don't information. So people have their own way of worship. And there Thomas preached the gospel. And the, 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 the village was converted. And he went over to another village to, to preach the gospel. The king's wife was converted. And the king got very upset and sent his men to kill Thomas. And while Thomas was running away and he got tired. And they catch up with him and desired to push the sword into him. He made the same, oh my God, my Lord. You remember how he said it when he saw Jesus with the nail prints? That was his very word again. The Lord my God. And there Thomas died. Folks. Our spirituality is real. Don't look for another. That's what happened to many churches today. Many young people today. They walk away from the Lord. And they get tied up with all this new age spirituality. So churches doesn't mean much again. Because they are saying we can create our own spirituality. And do what we wanted and still live our life. Because I can find it within me. It's a myth. How are you feeling? We are created in the likeness of God. Genesis chapter 1, 27. We are created in the image of God. His likeness and his image. Amen. And we said last week, image represent, is a representation of the one who created us. Amen. An image may be similar, but not necessarily identical to the source. Are the artists. Amen. That means we don't. God created us. But he, does, he doesn't look like us. God is light. Amen. But yet he has human's characteristics. He can speak out of that light. Nobody ever see God face. He's light. You see, you see if a bright light shining. You can't see anymore. God is light. Amen. 
I, I, I was studying uh, in one of my scientific research uh, about, I uh, was writing a paper about scientifically, or in the scientific sense, and, and according to one of the scientists, God is a, what, is a small, highly intense, intensified or indensified heat. All the world came into being a very highly heated, intensified heat that expand. And everything just blow, just expand and everything came. To, in the scientific term, that's what God is, a, a intensified light that is, was very hot. And expand and, and blew it and we get the, <laughs> it was very interesting, all the term is scientifically. But another way, in conclusion, and I, as I read through the scientific analysis of who they think God is, um, one writer said, well, God can't be quantified. And is in, you can't measure him. Because you can't see him. You can't touch him. He's there, but where he is. So really, we, have to, we just have to accept that there is a God. And if we can't disprove it, then accept that there is a God. If out of a million people... One person said God exists, then God exists. If out of a billion people, one person said, since Jesus came into my heart, I have a new life now. And a new way of thinking now, then Jesus did something. Amen. If, if out of two billion people, one person said, I was lost, but now I found was blind, but now I see. The light of the world is Jesus. He caused something different to happen to me. My life has been transformed. I'm not the boy you used to see anymore. Something happened. You don't know what I could be. But since Jesus came into my heart, I'm living a new life. If out of two billion people, only one person can say that, then Jesus is alive. And he has done something great. Is anybody here can say something new happened to you? We have more than one person here. Oh, praise God. Praise the Lord. Something new happened to me. He exists. When Adam fell from spiritual nature of God, he retained an impaired image of God. Didn't go away. He was still in the likeness of God. Remember when he had his son? Set. He and Eve said, and God gave us another son. They knew that God exists. Though they were banned from the garden of Eden. They knew he exists. Adam said, the Lord gave, Eve said, the Lord gave me another son. Adam said, the Lord gave me another son. They give the credit to God. Our spiritual likeness is restored in justification. Let's go on to uh, Galatians 2 verse 16. Galatians 2 verse 16 and read from the scripture. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall the flesh be justified. Amen. Praise God. Paul affirms that to be justified is to be counted by God as acceptable. Amen. This occurs not by the works of the law, but by the faith that we have in Jesus. We rely on Jesus' atoning death and resurrection for the continuation of our faith in God. So we are justified 
We have peace with God by the fact that we have faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. We rely on Christ. Amen. Praise God. So if we go to Romans 5 and verse 1, you can see how the relationship, our spirituality is developing here through faith in God. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. So we are now learning our spirituality, how it works. is by having faith in God. Having faith in God, we have peace with God. We are justified by faith. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. So our faith is justified through Jesus Christ because we go to God through the name of Jesus. Just like in the village, everybody now in the Indian Ocean, everybody now have to go consult Mother Terrestrial or Mother Celestial before they can do anything. So if a young man is going to get married, you got to go see the, 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 the mother who lives in the temple for instruction. So now the young man is justified to marry the young girl because he consulted with the mother lineage. So our faith and our spirituality is justified through Jesus Christ because God gave us a name. God gave us a son. His only begotten son, that whosoever come to him in his name shall have peace. Praise the Lord. You see our form of spirituality? It's not in any human context. It's heavenly bound. Amen. Praise God. Now let's look at verse 2 of Romans 5. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So by faith, by this faith in Jesus... We have grace. We receive God's mercy. Grace is God's undeserved mercy. We do not deserve his mercy because of our sinful nature. But by having confidence in Jesus Christ. That his death and resurrection produce hope. We are justified in God. Amen. Go on to verse 3, Romans 5. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patient. And patient experience. And experience hope. So we're not only glorifying and worshiping God. Our spiritual leader. But we also glory in our tribulation. You, you see I went, during COVID a lot of people run away from church. Because they don't want to die. That's, that's the only reason why people stop come church. During COVID they didn't want to die. Am I saying it right? The bottom line is you didn't want to die to catch COVID from one another. So people didn't come because they don't want to die. They don't want the tribulation and to bear the sickness and the pain. They don't have the patience for this uncomfortable feeling. But look how it works for us. I'm not just using COVID, but other situations in life. So we will, have, we will, have, we will know of tribulations. A lot of us have tribulation in our life. It comes different ways. It could be sickness in your body. That itself could be tribulation for you. You don't want to continue this lethargic pain. People just have lethargic pain. Pain that will not go away. And they have to live with it. That is tribulation for many people. Experience. So, so tribulation gives you patience. You learn through your pain to have patience. You learn through your circumstances to have patience, to wait on God. Or wait for a better outcome, whether or not it will come. And patience that we have learned through tribulation to wait, give us experience. What can happen? And experience gives hope that better must come one day. Oh, praise God. You see the development of our spirituality. It's all in God, but it, it works differently from the world. It is not meditation and find your peace within you and then it go away. And another day you got to go again. And now you are told to lock everything out of your mind. 
locked out everything. You think it's easy to do? To go into meditation and block everything out of your mind? If you do that, then something has begun to fill your mind. The devil is very active to start put things in your mind subconsciously. And when you come out of that meditation, you come out with an experience that is devilish. That puts you more against God. You become more of an atheist, a hater of God. The mind didn't work that way to block everything out. However, if you really want to meditate, we are not against meditation as Christians. You should meditate. But when you go into meditation, meditate in the name of Jesus. For example, get Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And that could be your point of meditation right throughout. And if you notice the distraction as you, as you repeat in your heart, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fall. And that could be your repetitive point of meditation if you have in those challenges in your life. And then you begin to feel the power because you are meditating that God is going to overturn your situation and give you the victory. And your meditation status is really enveloped in God. Don't block everything out of your mind because the devil will fill it up with other things subconsciously. And sometimes even consciously. You know that other things are flowing. So get your Psalms. Hallelujah. Get your scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. Who, the, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Just a couple verses. And you focus on that. And you begin to build your spirituality. You begin to build it up and develop it in God. As your shepherd. Not in no nothingness. God didn't build your mind to shut down. Build it in God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down. You're going through trouble sometime. You need God to begin to, oh, oh, glory be to God. I'm teaching you to develop our spirituality, man. Develop it up and love it. Because God gave us that. God gave us the Psalms to use them to pray based on our circumstances. Somebody worship here today. Somebody worship here today. Paul says, who shall bring any charge against, the heal, against God's healing? Go to Romans chapter 8 and see how our spirituality develops. And don't let the world brainwash you with all these uh, fancy words that they're coming up with today. Try to delete the originality of God in you. That you found through Jesus Christ. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. The God of Moses. The God of Jesus Christ. The father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You, 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 that's where you find your God. Glory be to God. And as I said earlier on. If you lost track of God since creation. Start with him with Abraham. Praise God. Start at Abraham. If you lost track. Because a lot of things happened there doing after God created Adam and Eve. One time there was a, nobody was calling upon God. Though he was still there. He was there all the time. Waiting in line patiently. Until Enos was born. They started to call again and he answered. And as the nation developed. Right up to now. It seemed like people move away, away from God. I've never seen so many people leave church in all my lifetime growing up. Till COVID. I didn't know people have the mind to behave that way. Man, it's scary. I did not know that real Christians could disband their faith over sickness. Or over a pandemic. I've been looking at it. I've been noticing it. And I, I said, my goodness. That's what was taking place in the time of Noah. From, from Enos to Noah. I don't know how long people were worshiping God during Enos' time, but by the time Noah was born, people stopped worshiping God, except for the Noah's family. And, but this pandemic, 
people use it to the fullest. And some people can't even come back to church. They actually backslide. They literally backslide. Gone. So we need a revival, church. We need a revival. A type of revival that the world have never seen before. Perhaps in the 13 and 1500. When there was that massive revival all over the world. Starting out in England. And then go over to the United States. And, and spread all over Africa and the Caribbean and Europe. A mighty revival was taken. We need that again. For people to come back alive to God again. And calling upon him again. Because something gone wrong. Not gone wrong but something happened. We are humans. Christians were tested. We were tested. I thank God for a few of Few of us that stayed, that would never give up during COVID. We determined that praises would be coming up out of the house of God to, without even talking about it. We see our, our young men here, young people here, just gather for worship every Thursday night, practicing every Thursday night from 2000, and the spirit even developed more. The rain or shine, they were here without even saying we're going to do this. That God glory never stop. We just see the spirit just cut out that group of people. Oh, glory be to God. To make sure the house of God. You know what was the problem in Sodom and Gomorrah? When the angel, what God destroyed? Nobody there were worshiping. Another two cities. Two cities. Nobody there were worshiping. Abraham said, God, if I find 50 people in both cities, any of these cities praying, would you save it? God said yes, because God already knew there was not even 50 people. 40, God said, I'll save it. 30, I'll save it. 20, I'll save it. 10, I'll save it. 5, I'll save it. Guess, guess how many people Abraham found in Sodom and Gomorrah? Only his nephew. Only his nephew. Family. God desired to save. And then the wife didn't make it. Oh glory be to God. We need to draw our energy. Through the work of the Holy Spirit. Our spirituality. Come through the work of the Holy Spirit. That's. The energy God gives us. You hear people talk about energy these days. I get my energy from the tree. The tree is life. I get my energy from the ocean. I get my energy through meditation. I get my energy through walking. They're talking about spiritual, not exercise now. I get my energy through exercise. They're talking about spiritual energy. I draw my energy. I believe in energy. Well, Christians, our energy come through the Holy Spirit. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. For when the Holy Ghost is come upon you, you shall be my witnesses. Where do you get your energy from? The Holy Spirit. My energy come from the Holy Spirit to live as unto the Lord. You can lift your hands towards God and feel his presence coming upon you. We know he's up there somewhere. When we lift our hands... In worship, we literally feel the energy from God coming to us. Praise be the name of God. When we drop our hands in praise and worship, we feel his energy drawing us to him. Oh, somebody worship. You, you got to start listening. When you lift your hands in worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen for the energy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Feel the energy coming. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is that you have in your hand, Moses? Hallelujah. 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 
Let God draw you to him. Lord, we praise thee. The energy, the energy. Lord, we praise thee. Feel the Holy Spirit. Lord, we praise thee. Lord, we praise thee. You are standing on holy ground. Let the Holy Spirit draw you. Let the energy of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, draws you into fellowship. Woo! We are standing and holy ground. Oh, glory. Praise be the name of God. We are standing. You be Hallelujah. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that they are angels. You begin to feel that join into that spiritual realm. You begin to know they are angels all around. Oh, praise God. We are standing on holy ground. Moses had to know that he know that he was standing on holy ground. Holy ground, we are. Oh glory! Oh glory! Oh glory! Build your spirituality. Thank you, Jesus. All around. How could you come to that conclusion about angel? There is a higher energy. Yes, sir. Jesus now, for he's a hotter. or her mindset. So even if you had a spiritual relationship elsewhere through matrilineal matrilane or patrilineal or tradition, in order to really experience this God of Abraham, God of Jacob, God of Isaac, the Father for our Lord Jesus Christ, the mindset had to be willing to change. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You literally speak out to God. You literally sing out to him. You really, really call upon his name. Come now, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Take control. You know the song. Come now, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. With your power, live inside of me. That's how we develop. Oh, come, come no Holy Spirit. Spirit. We are in your presence. We are in your presence. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your power. Live inside. Oh, live inside of me. Build your spiritual hope. Oh, come no Holy Spirit. Yeah, oh, hallelujah. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your power. Oh, live inside of me. Live inside. 
your meditation. Oh, oh, your presence. Fill me with your power. Change the mindset inside of me. Yeah. Oh, come no Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Live inside. David said, Come, search me, O God, and see if there be any wicked ways in me. Psalms 139 23. Here is David building up his spirituality in the God of Abraham. Praise God. An understanding of your natural world will cause your hunger for something else than what is in the world. An understanding of this world and its wickedness and its limitation will cause a hunger for something else. Let that something else be the God of Abraham. Somebody say the God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. The God of Moses. Father for Lord Jesus Christ. The worldliness that is taking place today cause an hunger, Brother Rowan. Brother Vaughn, praise God for a different feeling. Oh, glory be to God. There must be an hunger for something else for the change to come. Oh, somebody worship today. Oh, hallelujah. There's time for you to cut loose from traditional religion and look to the higher power, the creator of heaven and earth. The time has come to cut away from your traditional spirituality. That is not locked in God and seek for him. If you seek me, God said you will find me. Knock and it shall be open. Seek and it shall find. All those who are thirsty, Jesus said, come. Come unto me and I'll give you rest. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Spend time at the river of God. There is a river and the fountain of that river is God. One way to connect with God is spending time calling upon Him. Genesis 4, 26. Our character, our likeness is being continuously developed in the process of sanctification. The act of cleansing from inbred sin. The Word of God cleanses us. That's how we build our spirituality with God. Jesus will be like the physical amen, elements of our life. He's very physical in us. Amen. We glorify God. God's purpose is in our life today is to conform us to his image, the image of Christ. Romans 8, 29. God wants to conform us to the image of his son. Amen. Hallelujah. Like how he and his son was at creation. Jesus acting as the word. Jesus, the word of God he used. This is my beloved son. God said, in whom I'm well pleased. Matthew 3, verse 17. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Matthew 17, 5 to 13. I am the father, our one. Amen. Glorify me now. Amen. John 17, verse 1. And God said, you are glorified. To be natural and spiritually connected, we must take hold upon Jesus' instruction and how to operate in the natural world. Luke 9, verse 1 to 9. Praise be the name of God. And that brings me to the end of the message. Know your spiritual source. Know where it's coming from. And then you'll start to see this place fill again. When people begin to know where their spiritual source is, you can't miss church. Hallelujah. You can't wait to come together for the worship because Jesus has always been in the company of his disciples. He kept them very close. The church, we need to be kept very closely for that hallelujah to go up to God. Can we sing this? My hallelujah belongs to you as we come to the end of this message here. If you can stand and sing this beautiful hymn, please do so. Praise God. Glory. Build your spirituality.
Thank you, Jesus. nation rejoice. Let the family of God that present to you today worship him. Yes, praise God. Enos praise family. God. Amen. Set family worship Bless God. the Lord. Bless the Lord. And God love them. Noah's family worship God and God save them. Today the family is a church of the living God. Let your worship go up. Thank you Jesus. Praise God. Let your praise go up. God bless you today. Anybody here that needs special prayer, just lift your hand. Whether it's for you or, or family members, keep your meditation while I pray. You can sing the song very softly. It's your moment of meditation as you look to God for your healing and your deliverance. Father, I thank you. Go ahead and sing your song within your heart. As you worship your Redeemer, as I pray with you through your worship. Thank you deserve it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. There was Hallelujah. one time in history when between Adam and the birth of Enos, men stopped calling upon you. There were no praises seems to be going up from that immediate family. But God, you rise up a family, true set. I could have lost it. Hallelujah. To call upon you again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And God, we know that between Enos and set family to the birth of Noah, something happened. There was a disruption. By the time Noah was born and have his three sons and they got married there was a disruption again in humans calling up on you to the point where you were grieved that human has departed again 
sins set from you and you save eight members of a family to continue your praise as long as earth exists you need your praise coming up from the earth because Satan will not get control of this planet you build it for your glory you establish the trees and the, the waters and all animals for your glory. And humans, you establish them on earth to lead the praise. So as long as earth in existence, humans are to praise you. So in every dispensation, in every paradigm, you choose a family to lead the praise. To lead the praise and worship. To lead the march of glory and honor to God. You chose a family from the lineage of Abraham to praise you, the lineage of Jacob to praise you. And you brought out your Masonic son who would lead that praise, who would lead that march, that praise and worship to you, God. And he declared once he organized and formed his church, he said the praise would continue. He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Because the church is now the new family of God. That shall lead the march and the praise and the honor and the glory to God. And every soul and body that is sick among us. We are sickness preventing the praise. I rebuke every sickness out of the body of your people. Every pain. Every circumstances that become a destruction from giving you the worship. Lord, we call you among us today. We call you for healing. We don't mean to bother you, Lord. But we have something new. There are some sick people. There are some people that need deliverance. There are some people that need change of mind towards you. A mind that will steadfast and sure. And understanding that they have found the Lord God. We have found the Messiah. And we shall not depart. Come see a man. Come see a man. Who have told me all things. Is not this the Christ. Serve him. Worship him. Glorify God our Father. Because his presence is in this place. God bless your church. Clap your hands and worship. He deserve it. My hallelujah belongs to him. Praise God. God bless you today. And God keep you. Hallelujah. We're going to ask that you come with your offering at this time. Amen. And bless the Lord with your giving. While our musician will play. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God with your giving. He said, bring your offering and your tithing into the storehouse of the Lord. And he will bless you. Can you come and bless the offering? You belong to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it.
praise God. No unto him who 